powered by Go Goat Sports in partnership with TSN. It is episode 37, season four of the Rain Dregs Hockey Podcast, presented by our title sponsor, Canadian Club Whiskey. Now, Ray, you know, for our subscribers who maybe aren't watching us on the YouTube channel, I know you're in Florida. I can't tell because you don't have an ocean background. You've got a hotel room background. You're there mm-hmm. for the All Star, but. Man, we'd be remiss if we didn't start the podcast talking about that golf experience, break, holiday, call it whatever you want to call it, that you just enjoyed this past week. How how nice was that? It, it was amazing. I mean, first off, we were in, Sw- in Scottsdale, and um, yeah. while the weather wasn't great the first couple of days, that meant you had to have on uh, kind of like a like a pullover. You know, yeah, and yeah. and pants. You couldn't wear shorts. The last day was shorts and golf shirt, and played seven rounds in four days, and uh, a little bit of a wrist injury here. A little tired, oh, you know. So may, maybe if you've ever played desert golf, if you get off, if you get off the green stuff, they call it the wash, yeah. and the wash is basically a bunch of rocks, and. Uh, right. Pretty easy to. I was in the wash. I got to be honest with you. So yeah, um, jammed okay. it a few times. Yeah, yeah played okay. Pretty uh, pretty happy with the way I played. But man, the the, the place we were at was is just a, an amazing place. It's called Whisper Rock, and it is uh, nice. it is a really really cool place. So good guys, good trip, and then jumped on a plane yesterday and got to Florida here for the All Star yeah. game. Just reinvigorating though, right? Like, oh. you know, we're so accustomed in our world of not being able to get that break in to, to just, you know, get away from the world, you know, not just hockey and, and everything that you've got, you know, going on, but yeah. just, I, we know that how, you know, you love golf. I love golf, yeah. but to be able to squeeze three, four, five days in like that, man, that recharges. The Dre, it's, a, it's 20 years. I've been in the broadcast side of things. I've never done it before. And it was awesome. And the other thing is, I know you're up in the cold in Thunder Bay and visiting your daughter. And But um, a blast of sunshine and a little warmth. Oh, my God. Does that go a long way here in the, you know, in the in the cold in the winter? It just feel, sure. felt like it was a real gift to get that kind of kind of couple of days. Uh, good for you. Hanging out with buddies, that always helps. Uh, speaking of, we've got Dave Nonis, former NHL general manager. He's going to drop by. Um, I haven't talked to Dave in a few weeks, uh, but it's it's timely, right? I mean, the trade deadline yeah. now is right around the corner. The Horvat trade, get some response to that. Uh, well, actually, we'll get your thoughts on it coming up in a minute here as well. But uh, you know, I want to talk to Dave about how we in the media – Just assume that a trade of that magnitude between Vancouver and the Islanders can trigger something. You know, it kind of first domino in that process is that media contrived or is that real? So uh, former GM Dave Nonis will stop by the podcast as he often does. Headlines again this season presented by our good pals at Boston Pizza. All right, you're in Florida. You're there for the all-star and a lot going on in Florida. I think the NHL just continues to improve on this weekend, year by year. And and it's it, it's not just, you know, the input and the investment from the NHL or the Players Association or the multiple sponsors that make this such a, a fun event, but it is the buy-in rate from the players. And if you want to go back a decade ago, as the NHL was trying to, you know, embrace the entertainment value of, of the All-Star you know, the players were reluctant, right? They're like, ah, eh, that's not in our DNA to, to do the razzle-dazzle, right? Like, we just we want to get here. We want to shake hands, take pictures, you know, half-ass the game, but that's it. Now you've got full personality and buy-in, don't you? And I'm reminded by that because they had the media availability, the players' day, and obviously everybody's going to Ovechkin, they're going to Crosby, they're going to McKinnon, they're going to the stars of, of today and, and yesteryear. But Ovechkin, whether he said it in his scrum or wherever he said it, he talked about Sidney Crosby and he just he looked to the future and said, I can't wait for the day when Sid and I can meet and have a couple of beers and just mm-hmm. talk about our experiences. 
How how much would you love to be sitting at that table when those two guys post career sit down and talk about remember and I did this to you and remember when you know I mean yeah. isn't that part of what All Star Weekend is all about that sort of openness and fun Yeah you see people you don't have any real connection to but you played against for a long time and you you know there's always some event or something going on you know, you were talking yeah. about how 10 years ago and to now when the players have opened up. Don't forget, Dregs, this used to be called the All-Star Game. And now it's called the All-Star yeah. Weekend. And the reason it's the weekend right. is because it's the skills, it's the events around it, it's the sponsor stuff. Um, yeah, it's more media, yeah. more availability. And the other part is the younger players, they're, they're not in the mold that we grew up with, which was – to be pretty yeah. tight, to be pretty, um, you know, you don't say much, you don't um, share much. And the players today, they've they've grown up their whole life being videotaped by their parents um, on every, you know, yeah. here I am at the first grade play, here I am at, you know, whatever. And so they don't care. They're comfortable. And the more that they can be comfortable, the better it is for the game. As for yeah. Ovi and Crosby, they're so unique. I mean, two – <laughs> literally once in a generation players that came along in the same generation, which rarely happens yeah. to, to play in the same division all those years, all those different playoff battles and regular season battles and what Sid did and what Ovi did. And uh, it was easily comparable and they have taken each of their franchises to a different level. I mean, they've, all the promise that they had, they've lived up and surpassed all of it. And that that's pretty rare. They're both very, very special players in their own rights and in their own way. And they've been just phenomenal for the league. Yeah. Well, you enjoy the weekend. We know it's going to be a fun one. I always enjoy it. I, I wish I was in Florida, but instead I'm, I'm in Thunder Bay going to my daughter's production and then uh, off to the cabbage and can do a little bit of ice fishing so different worlds but you know it's right. a break and it's enjoyment and you're you're enjoying sun but you're working so it's a little bit different for you yeah but i mean you enjoy going sitting on a lake and fishing i would not find yeah. that enjoyable yeah. <laughs> let's get to some trade speculation uh, as we dive into headlines here um start with the vegas golden knights now hey shocking to no one would be the the realization that Kelly McCrum and George McPhee, the Vegas Golden Knights, are likely shopping for a big ad again, right? I mean, they've been down this road so many times. Um, prior to the news this week of Mark Stone having back surgery, which is going to keep him out of the lineup indefinitely, I knew that the Vegas Golden Knights were in the market for a forward. I didn't know whether they were big game hunting or, you know, they're just right. hoping to add a, a piece. And in fairness to the Golden Knights, like so many clubs, you know, they, they can't truly assess because they're not healthy and they want it to get healthy. But, you know, they would have known that the Stone situation was serious dating back to, I think it was January 12th where he injured the back. When you look at that Vegas lineup, how big should McCremen be going here? Uh, you know, as as it, it, I guess common sense would say he's going to go as, as far as he can within cap compliance, right? I mean, so we're probably talking about a significant piece here, I would think, up front. Oh, I would be stunned, Dregs, if it wasn't. Um, yeah. Never in the short history of the Vegas Golden Knights have they been considered nibblers around the edges. I mean, they're <laughs> they're in for everything. Any big acquisition, they seem to have some connection to it somewhat, somehow, um, without yeah. Stone. So you take that $9 million salary that's going to go on LTI, and now they've got that to play with. You know, mm. giving it backs up for a month, poof, they, they'll probably have potential to add one or two of the bigger names if they want. And, I, and I'm with you. The, yeah. Their ads are up front. You know, that's where they yeah. would go. I just... I don't see them thinking we'll tiptoe around this. The reason being outside of Colorado, who are either the second wild card or they're not in the playoffs at this point, it feels like the the conference is completely open. It's completely wide right. open. That's what it feels like. You know, I'm looking yeah. 
I keep waiting for Seattle to back up a little bit. I keep waiting for Vegas to back up a little bit. I think the Oilers are yeah. going to make a run. I think Colorado is going to make a run. St. Louis is backing up. I'm like, man, there's nothing that seems similar to what you might think. So I think they'll go big yeah. I, or as big as they can. How So when you – as big as they can, I get that, and I agree with you. And, and you know, it's so easy for – teams and for fans to be drawn to what is the most obvious. And normally it's depending on restricted free agents, right? It's Horvat, it's Ryan O'Reilly, it's Tarasenko, Barbashev, go down the list. Um, for me, I'm more intrigued always of the players who aren't in play. And that's why I look at like a Josh Anderson with the Montreal Canadiens. And I, I know I talked about this on Insider Trading on TSN. The Calgary Flames, Brad Treliving has been looking at Josh Anderson since Josh Anderson was with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, so whether it's a player like that or – and I mean, this is what pro scouting is all about, though, isn't it, right? You know, so we talk about the obvious candidates – but if it's Vegas that we're talking about here who wants to add that big piece, they could be looking at an Anderson. They could be looking at a player that we're not even considering anybody. even being remotely in play, right? Yeah, anybody. And I and I would say this is this is one thing that has changed a little bit here over the last couple of years, and that is the pro scouting. In that mm. it used to be kind of an afterthought. Yeah. Now a trade's made or a trade is being proposed, they go to the pro scout that's in charge of that team that's watched the Canadians play, if we're talking about John A Josh Anderson. He's watched Josh Anderson play 25 times this year. And he's written 25 yeah. or 15 reports if he's watched them 25 times on him. And so right. you get a, right. a true feel of what's going on. You know, what is yeah. what is he playing like? How it, you know, what... You know, where would he fit? What line would he fit? What price do we want to pay? All that sort of thing. So this is the time the pro scouts really make their money. Here and just prior to free agency, when teams are trying to figure out which free agents to sign. But there is, right. you know, um, God, was it a couple years ago, Anthony Mantha, out of nowhere, <clears throat> got traded from Detroit to Washington. It was at the deadline. It was a trade that just, well, they were yeah. moving money around and moving players in extra years. And they got Jacob Verana, who unfortunately has gone off, you know, the rails a little bit and is back from rehab and all that stuff, trying to get his game in order. But there, there's going to be a deal that we just don't suspect a player you might not right. think of. Right. And, you know, yeah. you say Calgary and Brad Treliving and Josh Anderson. I've always had New Jersey in my head for Josh Anderson. I think he makes a lot of sense there. Yeah, and uh, you know what? Uh, I size, mean, Vegas has size to, be to add that. To, yeah, but see, yeah. Anderson doesn't fit in Vegas for me. You know, not to me, really on that side. Yeah, no, to me, it's it's something different for Vegas. Hmm. Okay. Um, hey, let's wrap up headlines. Um, you know, the Vancouver audience, our fan base there, yep. would uh, be displeased if I didn't get your response to the the Bo Horvat trade, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you, you weren't out of the mix per se, but uh, that was an interesting deal. But I, I, you know what? I, I think that both sides got what they needed. You know, I think it's an interesting ad by Lou Lamarillo and the New York Islanders. I think Bo is, is going to help that team move along. And I think Vancouver did real well in getting the three pieces that they did. What do you think? Well, I, I, I think if anybody thinks this is, you know, the rate that Bo Horvat's going to always score at, you know, like a 50 yeah, goal, 50, yeah. you know, yeah. it's not. But Bo Horvat is going to score. He's big and he's going to be. He's gonna he's gonna make the Islanders better. Now, can they get them him signed? I it seems unlikely to me that Lou Lamarillo made this deal thinking he's not gonna get him signed. Right? Like that that would be my yeah. my view on that. The Canucks get a first round pick, um, either this year or next. It's protected in the top twelve. Um they you know, they get a former first rounder and Anthony Beauvillier, and they get Atu Ratu. Mm -hmm. Adi Ratu, 
I'm going to screw that name up. It's spelled ratty for people that don't know. It's going to be hard, man. It's, I yeah. know, I know. And um, he's 20 years old. That's exactly the parameters they laid out in the trade that they were hoping to get. Now, how does the futures part of that play out? You don't know, but they got what they were looking for. The Islanders got what they were looking for. And maybe this yeah. is a trade in four or five years. You go, geez, both teams got a lot of runway out of that. Uh, but it, but it is the first one, so we'll, mm. you know, we'll have to see if that unlocks things. But I, I thought Vancouver did well in the deal. I was not surprised, um, even though some people might think I know, but I don't. Um, I was not surprised yeah. they moved earlier rather than later. Just too many things can go wrong if you hang on to such an obvious trade yeah. piece. Nonetheless, would be an injury. Well, much more trade speculation, likely a lot more coming out of Vancouver in the days and the weeks ahead. Those are your headlines. Thanks again to Boston Pizza. Our interviews on Ray and Dregs this season are brought to you by our good pals at Canadian Club, who are asking, are you over beer? Why not try a refreshing CC ginger ale next time you're having a drink or watching a game? 